Hi, everyone. Welcome back to week three of our The Dream of You online Bible study. We have Joe Saxon with us. And Joe, I know I have enjoyed the past two weeks that you have um, taught us on these audio teachings. Just as a reminder for all of you listening, these audio teachings are available whenever you would like to listen. So just go back to your newsletter. You'll find it right there and you can play it as many times as you would like. And so, Joe, how are you doing for week three? We're almost at the halfway point. Ah, oh, I'm good. I'm good. And I'm excited. I, I know I said that last week and maybe even the la- the week before, but I, <laughs> I, I, I love the chance. I love the chance um, to pause and just take a little moment. I know that we are people who are overcommitted, <laughs> have oh, got a lot going on, yes. lots of commitments, and we can sometimes neglect some of the foundational pieces of our walk with the Lord. And so the chance to stop reground ourselves in our God-given identity is crucial for our lives. And um, any any chance we get a moment to do that, even if it's just for five minutes, I think it's a wonderful thing. I agree. And so I think that was encouraging to maybe somebody listening out there that you committed to this Bible study. And if you're only able to read a few pages of a chapter or maybe only listen to this audio teaching, that's a commitment that you're making and, yeah. and God will use whatever you're able to give. So um, we're glad that you're glad that you're here. We're glad that you're listening. And so, Joe, we'd love to hear what you have to say for week three. Yeah, I was I was thinking of how God continues with us, you know, Um that he keeps on writing a new story in our lives. And I'm, I'm struck by the verse, there's a verse in Lamentations, which, which I know it sounds negative, but it gets to the good stuff. And it talks about God's mercy being new every morning. And when I think of what you'll be looking at this week, I think of, I kind of almost feel nostalgic mm-hmm. about some work God did in my life then, but how, um, how he laid foundations, I mean, understanding that not only who I was, but whose I was, because identity is given. And we find out that we belong to him and he redeems pieces of our journey that we might feel are so fragmented that they could never be fixed. And there are two things that come to my mind. One is, I think in, in the chapters that you'll be looking at, I talk about how God helped me understand that he was my father. My, um, my biological father, my earthly father was like all of our fathers imperfect Mm -hmm. and had not been part of my journey and I and as a result I projected onto God an image of a God who would always walk away who would never be there who would never be faithful and I needed to meet God for who he was not who I who I was afraid he might be Mm. um and I realized I came to prayer and study and everything with with a expectation that God wasn't really interested but I also am aware that that is something that happened then, but something that God continues to reassure me of now that he's still there. He's still present. He's still interested in every part of my life. And then the other, the other part that has struck me about this time was actually my favorite verse. I want to make it sound like I discovered this verse wistfully, but this has been my favorite <laughs> verse forever. And it was the first time I realized that um, God's truth would set you free. You know, Jesus talks about, you knowing the truth and it'll set you free. But yeah. the verses that, I, that have been an anchor and were an anchor for some of the chapters that I wrote um, is taken from Psalms. In fact, I go on a lot about Psalms in, <laughs> in the book. That, and basically, thank you, everybody, for letting me do that. But, <laughs> but it was Psalm 139, verse 14. And it's, um, and it's been an anchor. And I'll talk about how it was an anchor then, but how it's still an anchor now. And it's these words that David writes where he says, I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And I, I love the fact that David wrote them, actually, mm-hmm. that he is um, a complicated character. He has had a life. <laughs> That's if a nice way read, to say that. Do you know what I mean? He has done character. some stuff. He has, done, he has been some places and he's done some things. And not all of them great. And... Um, he has reckoned with himself again and again. And throughout the arc of this psalm, you see him recognizing that he is seen, that he is known, and that somehow in the midst of it all, he is still loved. And he is still valued and valuable to God. And when I first reckoned with these verses, it was me as a 16, 17 year old reckoning with how I felt about my body, (laughs) how I felt about every part of my body. Puberty hit me with a vengeance, friends, and I'll just leave it at that um, as a description. But it was kind of a shock to me. Mm. And I remember having to stand before the mirror with this verse and saying, I praise you, God, because my face is fearfully and wonderfully made. My arms are fearfully and wonderfully made. And almost reclaiming this God-given sense of who I was. Mm -hmm. 
and applying scripture to every part of my body and every part that had been maligned as a black woman living in, in, um, in white majority spaces, there were times I encountered racism about who I was and having to say, you know what, I'm just going to speak God's truth over what um, he says about me rather than what the world says about me right now, because he says my skin is fearfully and wonderfully made. And I'm going to align with that, not with the rejection and the aggression and the things I've experienced. And, um, and it was so powerful to embrace God's truth about me. It was so redemptive to embrace God's view of me, knowing that there was a father who loved me and he wasn't a silent one. Mm -hmm. He was one who said fearfully and wonderfully made. But even as I bring it through to the present day, you know, as as women, our bodies go through journeys, <laughs> lots yes. and lots of journeys. And I don't know whether along your journey, you may have felt your body betrayed you, mm. you know, um, that it didn't align with what you were hoping how it would look like, Um that maybe it wasn't puberty that hit with a vengeance. Maybe it was infertility hit you with a vengeance. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it was childbirth that hit you with a vengeance. Maybe it was just life somehow hit your body with a vengeance and you can't look in a mirror and say, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made because life has happened to you. Um, people have happened to you. And maybe you've heard the lies that other people have spoken over you and, and have accused you of. And although you want to believe you're fearfully and wonderfully made, actually you're hearing the insults of others, the rejection of others, the experiences, the divorce you didn't ask for, the, the job loss you didn't see coming. And that doesn't feel fearfully and wonderfully made to you. But the, this truth is still there. And I, at this stage of my life, entering the joys of menopause, I will, I will hasten to add, where hot flashes are like, I mean, I don't, I mean, friends, I could go take us on a whole detour on the joy of a hot flash. <laughs> Maybe that'll um, be a oh, bonus teaching, you know? <laughs> bonus teaching. <laughs> how, how, use ice on all occasions. Bonus teaching kind of thing. There you go. But again, you can feel like your body has betrayed you. Or like, Lord, am I still am I still valuable now? And can you stand in front of the mirror and say, I praise you, God, because every part of me is fearfully and wonderfully made because of you. And you delighted in who you made and you delighted in how you wired me. You delighted in my personality. You delighted in all these pieces. And, and it may seem a bit in your face to say it, but I just want to encourage each and every one of you to simply take this verse, stand in front of the mirror and let the Bible read you. Mm. Let the Bible speak over your body, over your worth, over your value, because, um, because God is still saying those things, fearfully and wonderfully made. He didn't make an accident when he made you. He delighted when he made you. And Joe, when you talk about standing in front of the mirror and, and speaking over maybe each part of your body that you're fearfully and wonderfully made, did you have to boss mm -hmm. yourself around to do that? Were you just wise yeah, enough to do that? Or how did you even I, come to that? I, you know what, it, it popped in, and it popped up in my head as an idea. And then I thought, oh no, what a terrible idea. And, um, and then I resisted it for a while and just avoided the mirror for a, a little time. And when I say a little time, I'm saying probably a few weeks. And, then, <laughs> and I, I have to say for the, for the first few times it was through tears because I didn't believe it. Mm. Um, and I wept. Uh, and actually, no, I started with the parts I liked, my favorite areas, eyes and teeth, always Aww. been a fan. Um, start, I thought, boost yourself and then would go to other parts which I wasn't as big a fan of. And that mm. area of my life, it would have been my stomach and my feet because mm. my feet are generously sized um, <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and grew when I had kids, which I was like, Lord, nobody told me that in the books. No one. It wasn't um, written and, anywhere in any parenting no, book. Yeah. No, no one said that. No one said, I, I didn't put it this way. I didn't expect the prayer when I had my second child of Lord, please just hold on to the feet though. <laughs> <laughs> just, just hold the feet in place. And, and it took a while and it took a while before it felt like I was saying it victoriously. But you know, just because it doesn't feel victorious doesn't mean it isn't. Yeah. Just because it doesn't feel like it's like it's changing things doesn't mean it isn't. It's like you sow a seed when you, when you say these things. Yeah. Um, and I actually, there were times when I had to say it over my mind and like, and my uh, gifts and, and call cool as well. And just to remind, I, I was basically realigning myself with what God said about me rather than what my experiences or what society was saying about me. Yeah. And I like how you're giving us the space to have a marked moment or a, um, an opportunity to sow that seed, even if we don't yeah. believe it, feel it, yeah. um, see it, that we know that we are, we're claiming it to 
what God says about us and just joining him in what he has already redeemed as yeah. good. So um, thank you for that uh, activity that now we are all going to be standing in front of our mirrors and we'll do it all together, everyone. Yay. So, yes. um, thank you for that, Joe. And everyone, um, Joe brought up Psalm and Lamentations and, and various verses and something that we truly believe around Proverbs 31 Ministries is that when you know the truth of God's word, and you live it out, that it can change absolutely everything. And so we hope through this study and um, various stories that Joe pulls out of the Bible that you can start to believe that too, everyone. So we will be back with you next week. Joe, looking forward to what you have for us.